Jim Burnett of NASA's Lewis Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio. During this fifth program of the history of space travel, we'll see the first half of the film Friendship 7. The film is about John Glenn, the first American to orbit the Earth, and about the people and machines that helped make the flight possible. Here at NASA's Lewis Research Center in Cleveland, we take special pride in Glenn. He is from New Concord, Ohio, about 100 miles from the Lewis Center. And Glenn did some early training at Lewis, as did the other six original American astronauts. But the Lewis Center is better known for its work in developing rocket propulsion. Let's take a minute to look at a relatively new kind of space propulsion. This is the electric rocket engine, or the ion engine. It has taken some years to develop the technology. The ion engine is carried into space by conventional rockets, and once in space, the ion engine can be used to hurl spacecraft to comets and planets about 10 times more efficiently than chemical rockets in terms of fuel consumption. This electric rocket engine work at Lewis is an example of the kind of technology needed for future space travel. Now, let's go back to 1962 when John Glenn first orbited the Earth. <laughs> astronaut John Glenn into orbit around the world. Reporting to the British Broadcasting Corporation in London. The zero hour for Colonel Glenn's launch. General in Floride, where one more time, the last minutes of the departure of the astronaut American. Shot of contrary minutes for the astronaut American John Glenn on Cap Canaveral, Florida. Yes, a hadder, maratan, tania, with a water who howl the lion. Florida, Joe, Canavago, Taikon Hansen, and Johan Gelin. Keep Canaveral. American John Glenn Project Mercurio han reportado que ambos, el astronauta y su cohete Friendship 7, and report the astronaut's condition as excellent. Colonel Glenn at Cape Canaveral. And then astronaut Glenn will weather still remains the big question mark. But the countdown for Colonel John Glenn, the countdown is again underway. It is February 20th, 1962. And today, if all goes well, the men here will launch an American astronaut into orbit around the world in a spacecraft which he has named Friendship 7. Friendship 7 awaits its pilot. And the pilot has waited three years for this day. Three long, arduous years of study, of training, of waiting. And now he's ready. His name is John Glenn. Astronaut John Glenn of New Concord, Ohio. Lieutenant Colonel, United States Marine Corps. Married, father of two teenage children. Glenn has been a pilot over half of his 40 years, has flown in two wars, and is a veteran test pilot who five years earlier established a transcontinental flight record as the first man to average supersonic speeds across America. He volunteered for space flight. Is one of seven astronauts selected for Project Mercury, the man in space program directed by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Okay. 
two teammates have pioneered the way into space for Glenn. Astronauts Alan Shepard and Virgil Grissom tested the Mercury spacecraft on trailblazing suborbital missions, proving the equipment and pushing the program to the threshold of orbital flight. And now, it's Glenn's turn. Ready for pressurization? Now to Glenn falls the challenge of man's next advance into space, for he has been chosen to cross the threshold gained by Shepard and Grissom and to orbit the world. So the countdown continues for John Glenn. And it continues beyond this room for Friendship 7. And it continues this moment around the world. These are John Glenn's ground-based co-pilots, men he knows well, with whom he's trained, and in whose judgment his life is entrusted this day. They are the flight controllers, and from the Mercury Control Center, within view of the launch complex, they make the decisions, issue the commands that will govern the course of the mission. To these men throughout the flight will flood the facts needed for decision. The scope of their responsibility, of the entire operation, defies comprehension. Now, this very instant, the countdown for flight continues around the world, on three continents, on islands, in ships and planes, in lands where it's summer and tomorrow is near, in lands where it's winter, and this day is just beginning. Roger, how about you recovering? The car is coming. Roger, recovery. Uh, Roger, CTC, marker control sirens, go. Northeast of Cape Canaveral, 1,000 miles into the Atlantic, dawn's early light spills over the British Crown Colony of Bermuda, and Station 2 in the Mercury Network proceeds with the countdown. The tracking and telemetry stations, 18 in all, form an avenue of electronic checkpoints around the world to monitor and communicate with Friendship 7 as it passes overhead. If radar is the eyes of the station, then telemetry is the ears. Each second, telemetry will hear and record nearly 2,000 items of information radioed down from Friendship 7. And in the months to come, engineers and scientists will find in telemetry records the answers needed for the bolder space explorations of the future. Displays and recorders have been calibrated. Roger, thank you. Flight, this is M&O. Go ahead, m All subsystems status green. Roger, m understand all systems green. Latitude, five degrees north. Longitude, 10 degrees west. A spot in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Africa and Station 3, the Rose Knot, waits under the late morning sun for John Glenn. Operating out of Trinidad, Rose Knot will communicate with Friendship 7. Operation, this is Bridge. We're proceeding at slow speed at about five knots. The course is 198 through over. the Mercury Station on Gran Canary Island in the Spanish archipelago off of the African coast, 
It's midday at Station 5 in Kano, Nigeria, deep in the continent of Africa. Flight data recorded here at Kano and at Zanzibar on Africa's east coast will relay through this transmitting station to London and then on to America. Far to the southeast of Kano, beyond the Zanzibar station, the ship's bell of the coastal sentry tolls the twilight of day in the emptiness of the Indian Ocean. To the east, some 2,500 miles from the coastal sentry, dusk blankets the network's eight station at Muche, near Perth, Western Australia halfway around the world okay. from Cape Canaveral. And the printout, code display. Okay, that's fine. Let's just uh, tweak her up on here. Today, February 20th, is fast fading over the Australian tracking sites at Muche and Woomera. And when Glenn arrives, tomorrow we'll greet him. But north and east across the Pacific, Far beyond the Mercury station on the coral atoll called Canton Island, February 20th is just minutes old on Hawaii's garden island of Kauai, and there men prepare for the arrival of Friendship 7. Ready for a 165 check. All oh, Roger. If that fitter is good. All oh, Roger. Eastward again, deeper into the day that will soon awaken over the Americas. Eastward to the Gulf of California, and to the Mercury station at Wymus, Mexico. Real good, just waiting for liftoff. M and OTM, status green, proceeding with pre-pass calibrations. North of Mexico, in the pre-dawn along the west coast of the United States, the mountaintop station at Point Arguello, California, waits out the long countdown, ready to track John Glenn. All right, Roger, I can What is the present count? All right, Roger. Southeast now, to the farmlands of Texas, where the station at Corpus Christi continues its preparations for flight. I must go in Texas, please. Hey, affirmative. Roger, all systems, would you please commence pre-flight calibrations at this time since the countdown is progressing normally. Advise me when you have completed them. Far to the north and east of Corpus Christi beats the heart of the worldwide Mercury Network the computing and communication center that bonds it into a working entity. This is the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Through here funnels the voice and teletype communications that link the global stations to Mercury Control. The computers enable men to reach judgments within the flashes of time allowed for control of a spacecraft that moves faster than a brain can react. Throughout the flight, the computers will generate recommendations on whether the mission should continue or be aborted. They will determine locations of the spacecraft, the time it should begin re-entry, the point at which it will land. And the most vital of these findings will be transmitted instantaneously to Cape Canaveral. Around the world, all is ready. The men, the stations, the space vehicle. And now reporters learn from the astronaut's information officer if the most vital of all elements is ready, the man himself, John Glenn.
What are the thoughts of a man about to rocket into history? Glenn is the astronaut, the man who will challenge space. But he is just one member of an international scientific endeavor that requires the genius and skills of some 40,000 other men and women scattered throughout the world. From the engineers and technicians who produce the space vehicle to the crews now preparing to launch it. From the tracking experts who will chart his voyage around the globe to the sailors now waiting at sea to recover him. Behind this day stands years of preparation, of research and testing, of planning and training. And the purpose of it all is knowledge. Knowledge of space and of how effectively man and spacecraft can function together in its hostile environment. Knowledge that will serve as the basis for space explorations of the future. Hard-won knowledge of benefit to all men, bought by sacrifice and dedication and courage. of minutes remain until the spacecraft crew on the service tower call for the pilot of Friendship 7. of John Glenn's life. His heartbeat, you hear, will flow from Friendship 7 throughout the flight, informing those on the ground how well he endures the trials ahead. Into the soft light of this Florida dawn emerges 
Friendship 7, making its debut to the day of its destiny. The Mercury Atlas stands alone, waiting to depart this Earth. A quarter of a million pounds of rocket with thrust equal to three and a half million horsepower. All to hurdle a 168-pound astronaut into space. All stations. Gantry's in launch position. AMR, CNS band beacons are on. Start interrogation in one minute. The countdown sweeps closer to the moment of flight, and recovery teams here at the Cape and around the world ready themselves to aid the astronaut. Above all else, John Glenn's safety is paramount, the dictating factor in all planning. Never in all of history have so many people shared, without censorship, an adventure of such magnitude. Through all news media and all languages, all the peoples of the world are witness to this exploration of space, to its success or failure. Time nears, and soon this Earth path indicator in the capsule will begin showing John Glenn his changing positions above the world. Hey, the wee 
wouldn't be with you, Thomas. Good Lord, ride all the way. Godspeed, John Glenn. Ten, nine, eight, seven. episode in our history of space travel, we'll see the conclusion of Friendship 7. Until then, this is Jim Burnett saying goodbye from NASA's Lewis Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio. Thank <laughs> you.